Hello, and welcome to episode 16 of the Nerds at Large Gaming Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Darby Hallman. I am Jeff Mayer. And Jeffrey. Darby. How are you doing this week, man? I'm uh, doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I am doing all right. I played way too many video games <laughs> <laughs> this week. Um, Lies. There's never too many video games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Responsibilities might argue um, differently, but... Eh. My uh, finance teacher might argue differently. Eh. Eh. He teaches yeah. finance. What does he know? Yeah. Why do today what you could put off till tomorrow? Exactly. Jeff, what have you been playing? Well, I guess we can start out by, you know, saying our goals right. from last week and what, where have we done them. I had three goals. One, finish Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Did it. Nice. I am done. Nailed it. Yep. Two, play the Hitman demo thing. Did that. I misunderstood maybe what it was, but I did it. Okay. Um, I'll go into de- more yeah, detail for that later. Okay. And my third one, just kind of a little bonus one, watched the Castlevania Netflix series. Have not done that yet. Mm, and neither have I. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and I want to. My goals were, I had two goals. My, the first one was to beat the Witcher Hearts of Stone DLC, like finish that, which I'm so close to finishing it, so that should have been a very easy goal. Did not do that. Because I went hard into my number two goal, I got um, the Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, the like remastered version of Final Fantasy XII came out this week, and I bought it against my better judgment because the financials, I probably shouldn't have bought it, but I did, and Jeff, I can't put it down. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love this game like as a kid when it came out, like even amongst everyone else saying bad things about it, but like looking at it now like really this is like one of the most criminally underplayed and underrated like jrpg fight yeah. systems yeah. ever i have no problem just saying well for a fact that it's the most underrated final fantasy game <laughs> it's not <laughs> that considering yeah. i mean people either love it or hate it but yeah. i see more people say hate it's I for whatever reason i mean i've been surrounded by a lot of, i've like seen a lot of people online who like it but that's just because they're kind of coming out of the woodwork for this yeah. release and everyone everyone like everyone who wants to like this game is loving it you yeah. know loving this remaster and so like i had a certain area where i my goal i wanted to get to i think i'm like three or four hours past that so nice. i beat that part of my goal and then some so <laughs> i don't know if that would give me half a point for my goal i don't know I, like I don't, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know how the um goal gods join judge <laughs> They will decide at a later date. Okay. The rules. Is Will the goal, <laughs> the goal god? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, Jeff, what I'm most interested in from everything you like played this week is you beat Zelda. I did. Ganon, you destroyed him. I'm I guessing. Unless Ganon wins, right? I mean, like... I, I texted you, man. <laughs> Tingle comes out Here. of his outfit, his spirit, and defeats Ganon after Ganon kills Link. Of course. Yes. What other way and, would... And they... then T- Tingle gets Zelda. The end. Yep. And then Link's just... The... Who's Link? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> all right well jeff we've talked about you've talked about zelda a lot on this podcast but it's been a while and yep. you haven't taught like it's it's been a while since you've talked about it and now you have like the full picture like you have the full game you've played and it's you're several months removed from starting it so like you know yeah. like the starry eye like oh my god this is amazing that part's wore off but the game is still mm-hmm. amazing to you right uh i think i text to you i still Still think it might be one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> Which, I mean, there were a couple f- little flaws, of course, but that's with any game. But overall, I just can't think of, especially nowadays, a game that's that long and you have to play that much that keeps my attention enough where I do go back like I did. Because a lot of games, even if I did love it, if I stopped for a little bit, like sometimes I do with Zelda because of school and stuff, I would have trouble getting back into it. Right. But I was, I did it for Zelda. Yeah, like it was never like a chore. To yeah, do it. and I feel like even in some of my favorite RPGs, there are definitely parts of it that feel like a chore mm-hmm. to really get through. Or even if I'm, even if I like this, like Horizon, even like I really like the side quests in Horizon, but like I, I won't lie, at at, at times 
it kind of started to feel like I was like, all right, well, it's just this checklist that I need to get yeah. through. And there can be obviously some stuff like that, and this yeah. depends on you. But I guess what helps this game is you just do what you want. There's no necessary checklist thing you have to do. I did the stuff I did. I completed all the shrines. I did all the dungeons. I looked all over the map because I wanted to do it. I could have gotten again at any time. It would have been harder, but yes. I could have done it. Yeah. I wanted to do that. I wanted to spend a hundred hours on this game. Which I like that like choose your own pace type yeah. thing and deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But how do you because we haven't really talked much about this and obviously don't spoil things, but like yeah. how do you feel about the actual story as far as that is or the main progression? It's very thing? minimal. Yeah. Like it's very short and not much to it considering how long the game is. Right. Overall, I, th- I think it's a solid story. I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing spectacular, it, but... Kind of like, that's not really the point exactly of this game. Yeah. Right? But... That's why I wouldn't necessarily not... If I was to review and do scores, I wouldn't knock it down that much right at all because of that. Because I think it, it does what it needs to do. Like, not really a spoiler. I'm not going to say... I mentioned before, there are memories you find. That's mainly the story, mm. a lot, where you get a lot of the stuff about what happened in this world. And then, of course, you can get a lot of story from the world about maybe sometimes what happened there. Mm. And from, you get some story from side quest characters. Right, right. So, yeah. But. Kept me interested enough. So, that's all I, that's all I really needs for this game. Yeah. And it does get, it does hurt a little from the normal, it's an open world thing, especially since you get to choose. Mm-hmm. It's, And they, they mentioned this in an interview, the creators of the game, that it was hard for them to decide what to do with the story because it's so open-ended. Like, because you, because you can do it. Which stuff I can in definitely see that because like when you're making a game that is as open as Zelda is, which it almost like kind of redefines what we like call an open world because like it's an open world game, but it's... It's also, like, you can't really look at this as an open world game and even, like, Horizon and the other ones as the same because it's a different type of open world. Like, like there's just, Zelda is just which open to the extreme. Literally, like, I mean, like, you give two people Horizon, and I'm not even, like, I'm not trying to say Horizon, I'm not trying to say this is a bad thing on Horizon or anything. They're just different type of games. But, like, if you give drop two people in Horizon and tell them to go for, like, four hours, they're going to have... Different experiences, but yeah. a lot of it's going to be like kind of around the same vein, and they're yeah. probably going to end up in a lot of the same places. I feel like you drop two people into Zelda and tell them to go for four hours, and they could see none of the same things. Your yeah. two experiences could be, yeah. especially if you drop them off at the end of the first area, the yeah. Great Plateau, or whatever, yeah, yeah. the first area. Because I've seen people do, I saw footage of one guy um do stuff like. And there's a way to tell which dungeons they've done. The first dungeon he did was my last dungeon. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? <laughs> they, he went a completely different way than I did in the beginning. I would love to see, like, a heat map of, like, where people mostly went. Like, where, yeah. like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I would love to see statistics about what was each percentage-wise... Which dungeon was each person's first, second, third, yeah. fourth? And it would be really cool to even like be able to look at like if you and your friend both had the game or whatever. Like if I end up buying a Switch and I play the game, it would be really cool if you could look at mine and see what path I took or like you know. Like, oh, you like, can now with Hero Path mode. You can see like everything, like like your, like your friend's I, path and all that. I mean, well, you can't see your friends. I'd have to look at your things. Okay, but I, yeah, there's no friend thing. But does, but, does that track your path for the whole game like that? Up to 200 hours, so pretty much. Oh wow! Like okay. I was able to see literally everything I did throughout the game oh, when yeah. I got that. That's more. I knew there was something like that, but that's more yeah. expansive than I thought. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. It's, yeah, it's a cool little thing. Yeah. So you can see like where you haven't been on the map. Yeah, I mean, I mean there are a couple little useful. corners I haven't been to. Overall, I've been to every. What if those are there. like the coolest corners in the whole game, Jeff? Yeah, I I, I doubt this, Ryan. I've seen enough. So, what was your? Do you know around what your total play time ended up being? Um, because the switch timer thing is weird, it does it in five hour increments. So, so mm-hmm. it. So once you get the five hours, it will update technically every five hours. So say five hours or more, then ten hours or more, fifteen, etc. Hmm. Which is weird. Yeah, I ended with Zelda at ninety five hours or more. So between ninety five and one hundred hours. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's not like. Yeah. 
That's, and I've heard people with a longer yeah, <laughs> play and Zelda, that's just so. my account, so it's not counting like when you've messed around with Zelda. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, do you think you you can talk more about it if you want? But do you think you're done with Zelda until DLC Pack Two? Yes, I I may pretty much make that my my goal since I got the game that Ganon would be the last thing I do. Yeah. I guess other than the DLC. And that like. I feel like you don't. Number one, you don't want to burn yourself out on it. And number two, yeah, it's going to make that DLC pack even more awesome when it gives yeah. you an excuse. I mean, I have the trial of the sword thing, the like forty-five levels, which right. is cool. It's difficult. I could go do that. I might go do that. Have you tried it at all? I, I tried a little bit. I did well, and then I accidentally um, blew myself up. Um, <laughs> so I had to start over. It's. There are like three different so levels to it. I think like three mm-hmm. checkpoints or. Yeah, two or three checkpoints for out the where you can um, st- go back in and warp to that point. Yeah. But otherwise, if you die, you start from the very beginning with nothing. So you can go to level. F- if you really hate yourself, you can get the four forty four die and then start all the way from the beginning. But so did you rage quit kind of? <laughs> uh, I just wanted to try it out and see. Yeah, it's like I was like, okay, I'll try this later. But. I kind of like how they kind of do that with the warp thing. It's like, okay, if you want to warp to a later thing, you can, but you you don't get to build up any items by doing the lower floors. You start at that warp point with nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's your choice how you want to do it. That's good. Which is, yeah. Yeah. So between that and hopefully a story DLC, that will easily be worth $20. Nice. Well, any closing thoughts on Zelda? Because this might be your last chance to talk about it for an extent. Ex- at least until I guess you or, play it. Or at least like this heavily. Yeah. Um, trying to think. I think we did most of the stuff. Um, guess I can say a big thing. Dungeons could have been better overall. Mm-hmm. I agree with most people. That's maybe the weakest part, just because compared to other Zelda dungeons. Um. You think I think it's because they were putting so much effort into the shrines, they kind of like did. Um, and a lot of it had to do. They were a little samey. I mean, the. I mean, by that I mean the backgrounds were, same like the walls and everything. Yeah, I know the better word for that. I can't think of it at the top of my head now for every yeah, reason. Yeah, maybe just the general look of the. Yeah, the like, general look design. Was, and I mean, it makes sense, and you know the way of the story, but it's like, no, that makes me. Every it, weapon is important. Yeah, it makes you value them more. Like, yeah. okay, well, I, I should not just go yeah. willy nilly. And, and so. I mean, it's not like weapons are hard to find. There are weapons everywhere. They may not. Some are weaker than others, but yeah. you're unless you're really bad, you, you should never go without a weapon. Yeah, and you should just maybe save your big, like powerful yeah, weapons. And then, like, yeah, said I saved a lot of my strong ones or tried to. I had to use them throughout for again. Yeah, and like in some ways, it makes the micromanaging and the like thinking about it like. Um, more complicated but in other ways I enjoy it, that <laughs> in other ways it kind of makes it maybe not less complicated but I mean a little less complicated because you're not having to worry about this is my sword and I have to get this sword to get better than this and I have to augment this or whatever yeah. it's just kind of like what do I have right now yeah and it's like when it's done it's like well crap what will work here more. yeah what errors where I work here and I feel like that can make like every situation even if you're really powerful if you go into it it could shake things up if it's like yeah. oh but I'm not I don't have weapon you know like I have to yeah, like, figure out how to make this work and it probably makes you learn how to use different weapons more because oh, yeah. you have to you mm-hmm. know yeah. like it's, it's an interesting thing where I get so excited when I find when an enemy drops arrows like yes arrows <laughs> yeah and I'll purposely like continuously dodge people's arrows because up to a certain point you can't do this endlessly but the first like four or five arrows an enemy shoots Stay on the ground you if they miss you. Okay. So I continuously dodge them on purpose and pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> I remember them, like, for the few hours I played, I was, like, in a boss. I was just running around, like, picking up arrows out of the ground. I had, like, yeah. three arrows. I'm like, I have to make it work. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, that's probably it for Zelda. One of my favorite games of all time. Unless Super Mario Odyssey is somehow better. And also because of my favorite games of all time, Zelda would be my game of the year. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a lot of people. I mean, yeah. like... You know, I don't necessarily like when people are just like, it's the game of the year, like, completely no questions asked or whatever. But, I mean, right now, it's probably yeah. most people's game of the year. Hey, Jeff, we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. We yeah. have camera issues. And because of that, now we won't have video for this episode. <laughs> we are working on this, you guys. We're sorry. Yep. Um, camera is in our budget. It's uh, yep. <laughs> coming up soon. Hopefully. 
Um, okay, but I think that's enough Zelda talk. And just so you guys know, like, we are officially kind of hitting the somewhat post- E3 news drought in a way that like we still have some stuff, but we're probably yeah. going to talk a little bit more about just games we've been playing right now, mm-hmm. like, and that's why we're still talking about it right now. Yeah, and because we've a actually more, <laughs> we've actually played some games, which you've played more than just Zelda. Yeah, this week. Um, yeah, I have two more games, and then I guess an announcement of sorts that could be interesting for our podcast. Yeah, okay. I mean, you already know it, but yeah, yeah. Um, okay, second thing I played and was my second goal. I played the Hitman demo thing. I misunderstood what it meant. What it meant when it said like first episode, I thought it was Paris or whatever. Hmm. But it's just a tutorial thing, which is fine. I yeah, mean, okay. I, makes sense if it, I guess I was already in the game. I just never saw it. Okay, so it's just like really short. Yeah, it's like thing. kind of two levels. One is just a straight up thing they tell you how to play the game. Hmm. The other one, which a smaller mission, which by the looks of it, you can do like other ones and handle it in different ways. I haven't gone back to do that yet. They said there are a bunch, like, um, a lot of people who play would know this, but there's different action things you do, and you can do, or ways to do it. I can't remember exactly they called it, but at the mission select, it tells you you've done this many out of this many total. Mm. So, I think I had, for the tutorial, like, 8 out of 45 or something. So, I mean, there are more ways I can do that mission. So, I'll probably do that. Try that out some more before I decide if I'm like going to get this game. Five ways to do the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, mm. A lot of fun. Um, again, I I didn't really think too much again. It's a tutorial mission, and for the most part, the first time I went through the, um, I guess trial mission, they kind of told me, pointed me in the direction. I just kind of followed what they wanted me to do. But I will try to do it a different way, and I guess. Come back and give more thoughts. And report. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because right now, it's not really much I can say on it because I just pretty much did what the game told me. Yeah. Tutorial-wise. Yeah. But uh, you also played even more games. Yes. Um, there's one more game I played. Um, this isn't the first time I brought up this game, but I'm bringing it up in a different way. I played ukulele. Mm. I have some bad things to report. Mm. I have some major complaints. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Like, it's been a while since I did play his school and Zelda and everything else. So, yeah. it's been a little while. Which is, this interests me because, like, I didn't, you know, you were always the more positive voice in everyone. Yeah. I need to hear what you're going to say, though, so go ahead. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know if this, if this is... Um, because it's been a while since I played it, or it's just the part I am at, but the way I'm in the second level, I played a little of the second level was the ice level. I don't know if it's because it's the ice level, but the controls were not nearly as good as I remembered when I first played it. I mean, they weren't the best then, but it was just significantly worse the other day. Yeah. The point it was frustrating, and the camera, the parts I went to, which is god off. I've, the camera is what I've heard most people yeah. complain about. There were some complaints, but it, there are some parts in this that were really, really <laughs> bad. Like, it, you get a power-up. There's one part you got a power-up, um, you know, so you can shoot stuff, shoot ice bullets or whatever. Um, and then you can go and jump on a thing, and when a platform that goes up, and there are enemies each side, so you figure, okay, I'm going to go up there and I can shoot them. Whatever. The camera apparently is telling me differently. Because when I went close to it and when I was on the platform, the camera shifted to above me really close so I couldn't see anything. (laughs) So I had to guess when to jump off. That's terrible. Yeah. And as far as the control thing goes, when I tried to do the... um, When Laylee kind of runs on Yuka and Yuka rolls. Right. um, The rolling move. Which is a how best way to get around the game because it's the fastest way. Mm. I don't remember controlling it as bad. <laughs> <laughs> it just it was just ridiculously hard to control. Again, it could be partly because I was on ice, but mm. I don't even remember it being that bad last time. I don't know. Oh, it, 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 it could have been like what you said with Zelda, like or you mentioned with Zelda the fact that I'm far away removed from when I first played the game, so it being shiny and new or off that yeah. could have been the case with this but 
Yeah, I mean, like, I'm interested to see if you play. Do you think you'll play? Do you think you'll keep playing? Yeah. I just don't know if I'll do the whole platinum gold thing. Mm. What, what is interesting, though, I'm going to... I can compare now. Um, I guess I'll get save the news for now. I got an Xbox One S. <laughs> oh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> um, got it on Prime Day. We had a really good sale. New member of the Nerds at Large family. We're not going to be... We're going to be more topical. I'm so happy. Yeah. And I got to say what games I got. I got Rare Replay. Um, Sunset Overdrive and with the package thing I got Halo 5 Forza 6 and Wii Core so pretty good collection of games right there solid list yeah yeah um, but the main thing I was getting into is Rare Replay it has all Klee Banjo Kazooie games on it so that's just what you'd rather play <laughs> I know I'm interested to see like if it's how they control or how they feel yeah like comparing to ukulele is it, is it because it's u- ukulele is it- it's just I think the controls worse. Are those or? done up at all, or are they basically just straight ports? So um, they changed some things, yeah. yeah. And I think they fixed some things here and there. Um, so I'm interested to see that. I did hear from some reviewers saying they replayed Banjo Kazooie, you know, shortly before Ukulele, and they pretty much said Ukulele controls fair amount worse than Banjo Kazooie. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and you know, this is weird for me to say because I'm high towards Ukulele. I backed it. I had the screenshot on my phone, partly because I'm lazy, too lazy to change it for I don't know how long. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Are you starting to feel bad about that? No, I don't <laughs> feel bad so. about it. Just yeah. kind of more disappointing. Do you think, I, mean, I still find it fun, but it's just a lot more frustrating than it needs to be. Do you think this, is, this might just be like a underfunded or understaffed game? Like they just didn't have the manpower? to <laughs> Manpower, I think they could have. Or to have it like QA test and to have it like you know, enough to where they could actually change problems or... I think it might, just might be a thing they may need to do a little more... work with it a little more. Because it came out less than two years after it started. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it seems... Yeah, it's... And then and they kept on, ex- I think, expanding what they wanted to do, so I just may have needed more time. Type of stuff happens a lot with Kickstarter projects, but... Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, we're not you're not saying that like the game is absolute straight trash and that you're not gonna, you know, not gonna yeah. play it anybody. Other reason the parts I tried doing it, playing the other day after a little while I'm not playing it was just a lot more frustrating than mm. before. Mm. And and just again, it might, it could really be because it's just really not that good, and I'm away from the shiny newness factor of a game I've been waiting for a long time. Yeah. I guess we'll stay tuned if you get to play anymore, and you can just yeah. I mean, I'll definitely play it more. <laughs> yeah. So me this week, I I've I've gotten back. I've, ugh, I can't talk, Jeff. <laughs> I am like fully in the Final Fantasy twelve, and I do have to say there are like all the changes in this game, like the changes they did. There make, are more changes than I thought they'd be. There's a, it's a it, they did a lot. Like first off, the most obvious thing is this game looks great. And if you look at, like, go, if you're listening to this and you're interested, go on YouTube and just look up any, like, comparison video between, like, the original PS2 game and this. It's crazy how yeah. much better it looks. Like, they really did a lot of work there. But um, even besides that, the job system is completely different in this game. Yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it of you, you were able to do it a lot more fluidly, like, change it a lot more often before, but this time you... You get a character, you pick one job and just go. Yeah, it's kind of like, but it's kind of in a good way. Like, the one of the bad things about, like, the progression system in the original game is that, like, every character, it had you have a license board is what yeah. they call it, and you, and you get abilities to go in through all that. The thing that kind of sucked was that everyone was kind of on the same license board, just at different parts yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah. So by like at the beginning of the game that was fine because everyone was in their own side of the board getting their own kind of abilities, but by the end of it everyone's practically the same so yeah. you use the same three characters. Exactly. Like yeah. there was r- very little difference between between everyone by the end of the yeah. game. Yeah. Uh been more from Easy Ally was talking about this saying like, yeah, now that I make picking one job for one person like I'm switching around a lot. Or that yeah. he did that. And that's yeah. what... I'm already seeing that. I'm, and I only have, um, like, four party members yeah. right now. But, like, I've had the other ones at different times. But I'm already seeing how that can happen. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is a big guy. Let's bring in the knight. Let's bring yeah. in my knight and have, like, the white mage healing. And it's like, oh, these are ranged enemies. Let me bring in the mm-hmm. bow. You know, <laughs> and 
And, and it's really, it, it, it makes it, like, it adds a whole new element to the game. And makes you really sit and, make you have to sit and think, okay, what am I making each person? Yeah, which that, I will say, like... I guess I can see how that can be a problem. Yeah, it is, I will say, it's a little, like, thre- it's a little, like, overbearing, like, when you're just looking at it and trying to think of it, and it can, it can definitely probably cause you some stress to try it when you're, because... Basically, for those that don't know, like when you choose a job for someone, you can't like once you choose it, you can't yeah. change it. You I, can't change it. I heard you at some do, point you can get a second. Yeah, job. everyone can get two jobs. You get a second job. I think everyone said it was around of like a quarter of the way through the game is around when you normally that's get a, it. I guess that's a good time. Yeah, and usually people like the second job, you'll do it to accompany whatever you chose the first job. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, like if you have like. A white mage, but you want that white mage to also be able to do like buff stuff, like buffing yeah. people and everything. You can add a second job or, or time magic. You can add like a time battle mage, is mm-hmm. one of them. Or if you want your knight to have like even more strength, you can do another one like that. And there's just so many different combinations you can make with that. I, I'd be interested to see because the changes and just everything I'm hearing makes me more interested in playing this. I don't know when I'll get around to it, of course. Well, like I will say, like I think the progression system was cool in the original, but nothing that great. It was more <laughs> the battle system is what I loved yeah. about it. Now I'd say they're both hand in hand. Like half of really like, half of what of why I've enjoyed this so much and why I've played it so long is that I'm sitting here like I'm like thinking for a, I've I've spent a lot of that time in the pause menu looking on Google with the different job systems and like who am I gonna make what? Yeah. And it's really nerdy. And yeah. like if you're if you're new to it or whatever, and especially if you're not all that into JRPGs, it might be a bit much. But I will say from everything I did a lot of research after I realized, you know, you can't go back on this, so I was trying to make it all right. Everyone basically said these are like some guidelines and there are certain characters that are better with certain jobs than other characters, but everyone says at the end of the day, that you shouldn't worry about it too much. I like, don't stress yourself out about it too much because no matter what you do, you can make it work. Like, there's yeah. really no wrong answer. I guess if you make everyone a white mage, you might be screwed. But yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like no matter what combination you do, you can pretty much make it work. So like everyone's like, these are some optimal things, but have fun with it. Basically, yeah. I'm interested to see like if I play like what the difference we do like I, how. Are, our choices compare. Which is so interesting. That's a whole thing that wasn't even there in yeah. the original game. And th- this is not brand new. This was in the international version. Apparently the Japanese uh, version yeah, yeah. had this job system and everything. But it's new to me. Same thing with Final too. Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. The Japanese get all the cool stuff and then we get it 10 years later new. Well, Final Fantasy VII, we, we, we got the weapons. So yeah. we got Ruby and the whatever. But anyway, so... Really, please, everyone, if you've like thought about this game at all, or you've thought it seemed interesting, or you've just wondered about the like arguments between people who love it and hate it, just please just don't sleep on this game because like it deserves a lot more love than it gets. I think. I think it is starting to get more love. I mean, just from people who are kind of more neutral about it, seem to be loving it now. And I've seen a lot like there, and there's even a lot of people like Jason Trier had an article up that was yeah. saying like Final Fantasy XII is a lot better than I remember it, and like in that he said that he was one of the ones that was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, it's not Final Fantasy. But then now he's replaying. He's like, oh wait, this is actually really like really oh the, this progression system, oh this battle system, ooh this story compared to other Final Fantasy. The fact, this game hits on all three fronts, like, and I forgot how interested I was in the story. Oh yeah, I always thought like, huh, I'm surprised it doesn't bring really much. But I remember it being very cool and just different. Because it's, I mean, like I will say, like it's definitely it borrows a lot from Star Wars, which oh yeah, I think is cool. Like I'm perfectly fine with mm-hmm. you know whatever, but. Where, like, most Final Fantasies kind of lean into a lot of the magical stuff, or even, like, just sci-fi stuff, like, with 7 and 8 and some of those or whatever, this one's a lot more, like, on the political stuff. Like, there's, you know, these uh, warring factions or whatever, and when it's kind of cool when you start out, you're actually starting out, it's after the war, Mm -hmm. like, after this war happened, and you're on the side who lost. But it's interesting because your side actually started the war, but then you lost, <laughs> so it's like you start out as kind of the bad guys, but then you're good or whatever. And 
even just the NPCs talking, it's like really cool how they built this world. Like how everyone like resents the Empire, but then you can also see it from their side, kind of like it's. There's a lot of shades of gray in there. They're really mm-hmm. interesting, and all of the characters are really interesting except for Vaughn. Vaughn kind of sucks. I mean, well, yeah, but uh, the main character kind of sucks. But main is char- he the main character? Yeah, though? main character's kind of in like quotes there because Final Fantasy Twelve there really is no main character. It's kind yeah. of. And that's kind of what I, like I mean. About it. I, from what I remember and talking to other people, I completely agree. It's pretty much split between Bosch, Balthier, Ash, and Fran. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's for most. Vaughn, like, they, really they all have, have their moments. Like, except for Vaughn and maybe Penelo. I can't remember. That's about her. Uh, Vaughn and Penelo are technically, I guess, supposed to be the two main ones. But they're yeah. not. They're, well, not Penelo, but Vaughn. I mean, Penelo is just like Vaughn's friend. But Yeah, she's, she's just there. Yeah. <laughs> But Vaughn really, like, for the most part, you could take him out of this and it wouldn't affect the plot all that much. Yeah. But you take Bosch out and the, the whole thing No, I just remember apart. that hearing that so whole thing like, is they just added him pretty late on because, yeah. oh, we need to have him, like, team main character. What are you guys doing? Yeah, which is, that's the kind of the only bad part of the game, but even that's fine. Like, he's yeah. not, you you have to get over him being a rebellious teen a little bit, but yeah. for the most part, it's, it's fine. So... I know I've talked about this so much. We're already like 30 minutes into the podcast. We've just been talking about this. But please check out 12. You'll hear me like gushing about it more because I think I'm going to fall into a gaming hole here just playing this. <laughs> and I really want you to play this at some point. Jeff. Yeah. Because I, re- I, mean, I played a lot of it at some point. I know you would like it. Oh, yeah. I, mean, like, I played a fair amount of it when it came, first came out. Yeah. Remember, you used my strategy guide. Yes, I did. <laughs> All right, Jeffrey. Well, now that we're half an hour into this podcast... Let's get to the news. Let's get into the news. Okay. News jingle, Jeff. Uh, jingle, jingle, jingle news. Thank you. Trying to mix it up. <laughs> okay. You ready, Darby? I am ready, Jeff. Okay. This first article comes from Charlie Hall from Polygon. Oculus could be developing a new cheaper VR headset, reports Bloomberg. The $200 device, its sources say, could be out as soon as next year. We reached out to Oculus, and so far, they have nothing specific to confirm. Um, an Oculus spokesperson told Polygon, We don't have a product to unveil at this time. However, we can confirm that we're making several significant technology investments in the standalone VR category. This is in addition to our commitment to high-end VR products like Oculus Rift and mobile phone products like Gear VR. Bloomberg's story said that Facebook is moving forward with its with plans to unveil unveil a new Oculus device in 2018. It will be designed for immersive gaming, watching video, and social networking, unnamed sources said. The new headset, codenamed Pacific, would look like a smaller Rift and be lighter than the Gear VR. While features aren't yet finalized, Bloomberg's source said it would be completely wireless and not require a phone or a PC. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so very interesting. Like on the surface level, it seems awesome. Like yeah, cheap VR, like two hundred dollar, very VR easily thing. accessible VR thing with like wireless. That's one of the biggest complaints about a lot of VR things, besides like the cheap phone stuff or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that's the one of the biggest complaints is all the wires and the fact that you have to have this high powered PC. All that's great, but what I'm worried about is this just going to be like kind of a gimped version of vr that's just kind of like not really worth it yeah because i could see that potentially being the case you know i see it too things i don't know as much about vr so i mean neither of this really do but i've seen enough to like and even like psvr like it's good but i mean like not as good and yeah. like and it's it's even priced at like what four hundred dollars or something right? Yes. <laughs> so I'm just worried, and this without wires or anything else, I'm just worried this is just going to be cheap, cheap to the point where it's probably not even worth two hundred dollars. And yeah, I'm not saying this by any actual like anything to base it off of. It's just a worry that I have, you know. Oh yeah, I agree. That could be a thing. Yeah, I'm interested to see how they do this. Yeah, how powerful it is compared to other VR systems, other Oculus headsets, and. I guess how exactly it works, since it doesn't require a phone or a PC. Yeah, oh, yeah I don't know. Yeah, that's why I, it, a little confusing to what exactly it is. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, you were. Th- I don't know. <laughs> that it makes you think it'd be very bulky, but apparently it's smaller. Yeah. 
I don't know what it is exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just the thing, right? It's like, really, there's nothing else. I mean, the coordinates is a report, yeah. Yeah. So, again, we may not know about anything about this until next year. This is also interesting from the standpoint that, like, it's kind of surprising because at first it seemed like they were the, like, definition of VR. When you thought VR, you thought Oculus. But they're actually behind. Like, yeah. they're getting beat out by HTC Vive and PSVR. And they're kind of, like falling to the wayside so it's interesting if this is like is this like some comeback attempt you know yeah i can definitely see that i mean if it runs well on everything and there's good stuff you can do with it the 200 hundred dollar price point could be very good for a lot of people yeah no, it makes it a lot more accessible which yeah. is a problem with and the other since you don't need the phone or the pc to do it according to this yeah so this makes it a lot easier and more appealing to most people i assume yeah, I really want VR to be a thing. I yeah. just think it's really cool, but I'm just so worried that we're just going down the path of it just kind of already. The problem is a lot of people were like really interested in it, but worried about it, so not getting into it. But because of that, people aren't investing in it as much. Yeah, it's a cycle. It is the like, Catch-22. But like, I feel like the developers have to understand that that's going to be the way it is. Yeah. And you have to like you have to set your goals accordingly, I mean, and like you have to you have to put the stuff out there now to set up for the future, mm-hmm. because like no one's ever going to be interested in getting VR stuff unless there's actual good uses and cool things to do. With yeah, it, so. I mean, look at the PlayStation VR; it costs more than both systems do at this point, except for like the Xbox One X, I guess, and same thing as the PS4 Pro, but there's far less stuff. To on it and that's those stuff are just mostly can experiences there yeah. hardly any full games on it yeah so while that's a good deal compared to the other vr stuff to a lot of people it's just not worth it i mean i mean granted we're not you know broke college kids probably aren't the like demographic anyway yeah. but even even if I had some money like that's probably not where I would put it first like or even like I'm saving up money for a switch Mm-hmm. Instead of saving up money for PSVR, yeah, and like me and you try PSVR, I think it's really cool. And mm-hmm. I, I think there could be awesome stuff with it, but just Sony, Sony did kind of the same thing with Vita. You have to give me more reasons to buy it before I'm just gonna buy it. Yeah, yeah, this has been talked to death of Vita. People didn't buy it because there are no games, but Sony didn't put no games because people weren't buying it. <laughs> exactly. And with and especially with VR, you have to know that this is something you have to bite the bullet on now. Yeah. And, like, part of me wonders if they're not doing, they're not supporting it very much because they're already working on the next version. That this was kind of, they just got this out of the gate for, like, the early adopters, but that they're yeah. already working on PSVR, too. I don't know. I don't know. PSVR Pro. <laughs> PSVR X. <laughs> yeah. It's going to give it to you. Okay, ready for the next story, Darby? Yes. Okay, this comes from Brandon Tyrell from IGN. Um, the exploration adventure game What Remains of Edith Finch is headed to Xbox One on July 19th for $20, publisher and Annapurna Interactive announced. De- developed by Giant Sparrow and currently available on PS4 and PC, What Remains of Edith Finch follows the story of the titular Edith as she explores the family home, discovering stories about the late members of her family in order to uncover the mystery as to why she's the last Finch still alive. Awesome game. Yep, we War- did a review thing. Like that was our main topic for one yes, of our sessions. Actually, go if you go back to that episode. If you ha- if you play the game, and even if you haven't played the game, go listen to that episode. And we have a spoiler free version at yeah. the top of it, and then we get into spoilers. So check that out. Amazing game. More people get to play it. Hmm. Not much more awesome to say. Day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not going to swear this here. Jeff could play it again on a new console if he wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Or I can play Ori. You game play I have Ori. not played. Play Ori. I'm going to play Ori. Play Ori. Okay. Ready for the next story, Darby? I am, Jeff. Well, Darby, this comes from Jordan Serrani from IGN, and it's that time of year. Delay time. Delay season, son. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom has been delayed to January 19th, 2018, developer Level 5 announced. It was previously scheduled to be released on November 10th for PlayStation 4 and PC, so only about a two-month push. Not bad. No. Um, Level 5 CEO and Nino, Nino Kuni 2 director Akihiro Hino 
in a video message said, We have decided that more development time is required in order to do deliver the full Nino Kuni 2 experience to our fans. I deeply apologize to those who have been looking forward to the game's release. Also in the message, Hino clarified Nino Kuni 2 will not feature any multiplayer content. Please rest assured, however, that we will con or he said, please rest assured, however, that we will continue to strive to provide a deep and satisfying single player experience that our fans can look forward to enjoying. So, yeah. I think in the long run this will be good. For yeah. Nino Kuni. I mean, like, obvi obviously, if they really do need to work on the game more, like, which I'm sure they do to a, to a certain extent, that probably has a lot to do with this. But even if they, even if it's the same game as it would have been November, it's just November's a bad time. Yeah. Especially for a game this small. It's just going to get drowned out. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, there's some people that, like, I follow, like, all the major gaming outlets, and there's some people there that really like Nino Kuni and will probably talk about it, but if, if it's right there amongst Mario, Assassin's Creed, Wolfenstein, Call of Duty, later Battlefront, Battle Front, it's not going to get talked about. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense, even though we said it wouldn't get pushed last week. Well, <laughs> we, we can't be right all the time, Jeff. We should, though. Just most of the time. Yeah. Because we're awesome. Indeed. But, yeah, I'm trying to think, though. We have to look, but I guess right now there's nothing around that time that... It'd be a great. That's what I'd be mean, like. Who Far knows? Cry Five is the only thing close to three hundred, but that's still like a month after. Yeah, that's, that's a different audience. In February. Um, God of War will be sometime in Q one, but I expect it in March. Honestly, if it stays in Q one, I'm hoping for February with that. Just because it seems like the game's really far along, and it does say early twenty eighteen. Yeah. But you're probably right. I mean, it probably is. Might be late March or like February, early, yeah. like um, Horizon. Yeah, it could, yeah, it could hit the same spot as Horizon, but. I mean, obviously, apparently in gaming now, no time is really that great of a time because they, you know, they, yeah. get, they get flooded anyway. But at least as of right now, January, I, I can't think of any game that really comes out is coming out confirmed for January or really for even... Yeah, I think we had a couple like early 2018 slash Q1 stuff, yeah. like Dragon Ball Fighters. I think, for example, must be in then. Either yeah. way, whatever... Whatever it's coming out around that time, it probably can't yeah. be worse than the time that <laughs> Nino Kuni was scheduled to come out. So. I mean, to be honest, this increases the chance of potentially me getting it closer to day one. Right, yeah. Since there's, it's my type of game for the most part, and it's not And just, much you need fun. that, like, like, you could always market it later, but, like, nothing beats the marketing push of, it's out, you know, like, the release day or whatever, and you want yeah. that to be in a better place. So. And they can show it off again at PSX. That that is also true. Yes. Um, ready for the next story, Darby? Yes. This is a pretty long one. So you ready? Yeah. Sure you ready? Okay. Hold on. Uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready. Okay. All right, I think I'm ready. Well, too, yeah, doesn't matter. This is <laughs> from Alex Newhouse from GameSpot. It has been almost a year since the procedurally generated space space exploration game called No Man's Ski. No Man's Ski. No Man's Ski was released on PS4 and PC. Developer Hello Games has been ready to silence since it released the game's most recent content update back in March. Now we know at least one thing that the studio has been working on. A crazy, mysterious alternate reality game which points towards a big update coming in August. The ARG started at the beginning of June when moderators of No Man's Sky subreddits got packages in the mail that contained a poster and a cassette. According to r slash No Man's Ski the game, moderator... <laughs> Unimatrix01, decoding the clues hidden in the cassette recordings, led to a string, which itself was translated to Portal. This allowed fans to solve the next clue in the wa Waking Titan ARG. So, so Valve is f involved in this, is what I'm getting. Report. Uh, Half-Life 3 is confirmed. Yes. No Man's Sky Half-Life crossover. Okay. Progressing through Waking Titan uncovered several documents that teased developments within the No Man's Sky universe. This culminated in the most recent file which reveals that a new update is coming in August. The document presented in a memo format is signed SM, which is almost certainly a reference to Hello Games founder Sean Murray. Someone who should still be in hiding. Yep. A bold <laughs> man, that Sean. Yep. Alongside this tease, a website went live for the in-game organization called the Atlas Foundation. The website asked for fans, which it refers to as citizen scientists, to enter their email address to help understand the nature of reality itself. It's a scam. Submitting your address will subscribe you to an email list and give you access to a survey which questions like, 
what does it mean for a dream to be real- realistic? It, it also asks you to send money to the Nigerian prince for some reason. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> you can also sign up for the survey for a chance to win a physical, le- physical level four atlas pass. Uh, and assuming that the te- teased update is a major content patch, it'll be the third such update since No Man's Sky r- released last year. The first, called the Foundation Update, added base building and frigates. Frigates, Jeff. Frigates. frigates. While the second added land vehicles, Darty. Um, alright, uh, so why, though? You may read all that and that's all you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, I... I'm so I'm just so fascinated by Hello Games, and by as someone who didn't who didn't get who didn't like take the bait on on, on No Man's Sky, and I saved my sixty dollars, so I, I I don't have to be mad about <laughs> oh, it, yeah, I and I can just be morbidly like curious. Like I am so shocked that they're doing anything more with No Man's Sky because of how like the story with this game I don't. The well is poisoned, I think. No yeah. matter what they do in No Man's Sky, even if this patch or whatever it, whatever it ends up being is amazing, it's just you can't even mention No Man's Sky without or making... Or Hello Games or Sean Murray. Without gamers fuming up. Like, there are people who are so <laughs> they, bad There's it. a reason Sony doesn't bring them up anymore. <laughs> yep. Because, <laughs> again, like, I'm sure if you're, like, listening to a gaming podcast, especially if you're 50 minutes into a gaming podcast, you probably know a lot about No Man's Sky. But, like... In case you don't know everything, there was just lots of promises made by Hello Games and by Sean Murray and PlayStation put them on a pedestal and did all this stuff for the game. They were very like kind of cagey about like what the game was going to be. Yeah. Came out and most of the things they said were just not even there or yeah. just like completely just not the way they said it at all. And Sean Murray was the one that was on the Colbert Show or the like. Um, Jimmy Fowler, wherever he was in a million yeah. places that he was like doing interviews all the time saying stuff like this. I thought he was, I thought I was never going to hear about Sean Murray for years. I thought he was just going to silently work on. Well, games, you tagged when you hear about Sean Murray, you got hinted at Sean Murray. <laughs> and like, I've even heard people saying, like, are Hello Games even going to call themselves Hello Games anymore? Are they going to like do something else so i'm just so shocked that they're even trying to do something and i want to see what it is again because of morbid curiosity <laughs> wait Darius, have thought is cuphead going to be the new no man's sky uh, it might be like it's legitimately might be yeah P- people have been feeling better about that overall yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, uh, well like, cuphead also hasn't made crazy promises i mean do you remember how people myself included were hyped about No Man's Sky yeah. like, because the promise of No Man's Sky the promise of No Man's Sky was freaking amazing like it yeah. the idea of it was really cool it was the execution that was not so I don't know Cuphead might be well I think what helps with Cuphead is only 20 bucks yeah it does <laughs> I would compare it's Cuphead more thing. to like Mighty Number no. 9 too true so, uh, true so I mean well. let us know are you playing No Man's Sky is anyone playing No Man's Sky? No Man's Sky. I'm so, like, I want to know... I want to talk to the man who's been playing No Man's Sky ever since its release. Man <laughs> or woman. I mean, some people must be if they're doing all this. Maybe. You assume. <laughs> I don't know. One can only assume. <laughs> Alright, well, we've crapped on No Man's Sky enough. Yep. Okay, next story. This comes from Kevin... Oh, boy. Kevin... Nedzevic, sorry, from GameSpot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so quiet, they might not have even heard it. Try it again, Jeff. You got this. Kevin Knedzevic, GameSpot? Yeah, sure. That guy. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> have normal, just white American names. <laughs> exactly. I miss Jonathan Dornbush. Okay, so, Sunny Cloud's out. It's E3 2017 pres- presentation with an extended look at Spider Man. Uh, yeah, the PS4 exclusive action game from Ratchet and Clank developers Insomniac. The gameplay demo offered fans a glimpse at the sprawling city that serves as the game's setting. And now we have some idea as to how large it will be. And in exchange with a fan on Twitter, Insomniac revealed that the world in its upcoming Spider-Man game is several times larger than Sunset City. The setting of the studio's Xbox One exclusive title, Sunset Overdrive. Insomniac had previously called that titled the biggest game the studio has ever developed, which means the upcoming Spider-Man will be massive indeed. 
Yeah, so, I mean, it's a little thing here, but it kind of just gives us a little glimpse into maybe how big Spider-Man yeah. is going to well, be. doesn't help for us right now, because we haven't played Sunset Overdrive. I have it now. Future Jeff. Will future be able Jeff to, will have an idea. Yeah, we'll be able to compare but, it. But, yeah, people who have played Sunset Overdrive, and I guess have both an Xbox and a PS4. <laughs> yeah. But it does sound like they're, like, I mean, at least just their wording makes it sound like it'll be a little bigger. Because, like, just from what, from what we've there. seen... It almost, like, you could tell me that Spider-Man was a very, like, linear game, and I would believe you. I mean, it's just, like, we don't know a whole lot about it. Yeah. But it seems like there'll at least be some sort of, like, pretty sizable map to go about. Because I know everyone, when I've seen, like, gameplay of Sunset Overdrive, people are, like, sliding, like, rail sliding all over the world and doing all this yeah. stuff. And it looks pretty expansive. It's so If it's a lot bigger than that, then, like, yeah, it could be good. I find it weird that no matter which system they do on Insomniac seemingly can't just do a third party game that goes on everything. They have to do an exclusive. <laughs> yeah, they just trade back and forth. But yeah. Yeah, you're right. None of them. None of them are both. On both. <laughs> it's yeah, whatever works for them. But I wonder if they'll ever go back to just the Microsoft exclusive ever again because it kind of seems like Sunset Overdrive. We're talking about criminally underrated. Like That's just yeah. game... No mm-hmm. one played it. I know. It's a, I think it's definitely seen it some people's like game the generation so far, yeah. so still or up there. It just was just kind of left to die in the Xbox, and no one played yep. it. Well, I'll get to play it. Yeah, and by extension, you'll be probably be able to play it. Yes, yes. And I am excited. I'm so <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm like this was weird news to find out that Jeff. Oh yeah, had I, I, I pretty Xbox. much I took a picture of it on my phone and then when me and Darian met up to do this like oh yeah Darian I got this in the mail today. He looked at it and he did a double take like wait what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want one of the last things he was expecting. Like, yeah, for just... like oh yeah he was like wait is this for your sister? It's like nope it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and like not to, again nothing against it like if I had a lot of money I would absolutely have an Xbox too. It's just like I just didn't didn't know that was in Jeff's financial cards. The Prime, Amazon Prime Day had a very good deal. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> That's how they get you, Jeff. Yep, and it worked. Bye, well, I'll mess around with that some after this. You know with this. Okay. You ready for... It was the probably the, one of the most interesting news stories this week. Yes. Um, this comes from Chain Gartenberg from The Verge. <laughs> I'm bad at this stuff. <laughs> um, Blizzard has announced the first seven team owners and partners for Overwatch League, the company's ambitious plan for bringing the esports side of its popular multiplayer team shooter mainstream with city-based teams that mirror conventional sport franchises. And those owners include some big names from the world of traditional sports. First and foremost is Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots, boo, <laughs> who bought the rights for a Boston-based Overwatch team. Jeff Wilpon, the COO of the New York Mets, will be fielding a New York City franchise. Other newly announced teams draw from major players in the esports world. Noah Winston, CEO of Immortals, is investing in a Los Angeles team. Ben Spunt, CEO and co-founder of Misfits Gaming, will bring a team to Miami, Orlando. And Andy Miller, chairman and founder of NRG Esports, will run a San Francisco-based team. Rounding out the first batch of Overwatch League teams and cities are a Shanghai team owned by Blizzard's Chinese partner NetEase and a Seoul team owned by Kevin Chow, the co-founder of Kabam. Blizzard also plans to add other teams and cities over time beyond these first seven teams. The Overwatch League is a big bet from Blizzard to try to get Overwatch esports into the mainstream. The city-based approach is virtually unheard of in other esports, and the company is really trying to make sure that teams take things seriously. According to an ESPN report, <laughs> Blizzard is looking get, for... Get mad, Colin Coward. Yep. Looking for a $20 million per team buy-in from the owners, with no revenue sharing until 2021. Blizzard declined to discuss the rumored buy-in, but noted that teams will have a big opportunity. Um, and there's a lot more. Yeah. Um, they pretty much just go on to say that... the. They wanted to mirror like conventional sports league with this city thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so of course, Jeff. Like, both of us are big gamers, but yes. neither of us are really into esports. I mean, like, no. 
I will like maybe dabble in like I'll like watch an Overwatch match here or there or a Rocket League match or like when Evo comes around. I'll this look weekend. at <laughs> which is late right now, yeah. Yeah. I'll like look at some of the compilations of like the best matches and stuff like yeah. that, like a little bit, but like I'm never, I'm not, you know I'm not really all that. If only Arnt was an Evo. It. <laughs> it's not really my scene there, but this kind of brings some interesting things that I I think that may that like could could actually get esports more get people like me first off people are in the games but not into esports and then maybe after they get me even by extension like mainstream people who aren't even like normally into this stuff at all yeah and part of it is having overwatch overwatch is insanely popular everyone plays it's a game that i actually like play a lot and everything that obviously makes it a lot more interesting and i love the city based thing it's, like, I think the more that they structure it almost like an NFL type thing, <laughs> the more I'm interested. I don't know. Where do you yeah. stand on that? Yeah, I think they have anything more interesting because, in a way, you yeah, you pick kind of pick a team to cheer for, like, a sports team. That just ma- makes you get into it more. Like, it's more exciting when you have your own team to cheer for. And I feel like that's one of the only ways I could really get into it. Yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. Like... I, we have nothing against it, but, like, I can't think of any sports, like, we cheer for, it, like, an individual person, like, people would do for, like, a fighting game tournament. Yeah. Well, and even, like, really the only sports I even get into at all are usually really, like, kind of team sports like that where yeah. I pull for a team. Like, I don't even really, like, I don't watch tennis or golf or skiing or any of that stuff. Like, I don't really, like, follow one person. So, like, this makes it a lot more interesting, especially, like... You know, they're going to add more teams. Maybe eventually they'll have, like, an Atlanta team. And, yeah. heck, like, maybe some of us could even, like, pay attention to it if they actually have things. If it's cool enough, maybe we could actually sit down and watch them or go to it and watch it. I mean, it might, like, this might completely bomb. Like, I think there's a decent possibility that this does not take off. And, you know, I'm just saying out of all the attempts, I think this is probably maybe one of the best looking ones. Mm-hmm. And it, those are some big names and a lot of money going into yes. this. I mean, like the New England Patriots owner and this and the New York Mets. Like that's that's kind of crazy when you think about it. Like just how big Overwatch is in general is just kind of, you know, blows my mind sometimes. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, if there's another sport that could potentially do this, maybe if Rocket League could try. To- Push into the esports. Yeah, and I mean they have. I mean Rocket League yeah. is pretty big at esports, but nothing like this. Like, I don't, yeah, they don't have like they're not trying anything. And part of this is because Blizzard is freaking gigantic, and oh, yeah. Blizz- Blizzard can afford to put all this money and make this happen. And even if it fails, Blizzard will be okay. Psionics can't do that. <laughs> like it would have to be someone else making it a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. I think Blizzard's just going to keep going with Overwatch until it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, they're never gonna stop with that game. <laughs> That's how well, I can that. So I mean, what do you think? Are, what do you think right now? Are the odds that this is something that you'll end up that will end up getting big enough and getting to a point where you're interested in it? Like, what are the odds here? Honestly, I don't know. My gut says this may not work out the way they wanted to. Just I don't know how weird it is, and I guess it depends on quickly they expand. Like, it's only seven teams. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it'll need to expand a lot more. Yeah. My gut says bad too. Yeah. I just think that the potential is there. And mm-hmm. it's a very it's a more interesting take than and the other thing. Bob people brought this up when scenes like so what are they gonna do? They're gonna do a week by week thing like the NFL does? Like what how they're gonna do That would do be this? cool. I, I Yeah, want... but the problem is there's only seven teams. <laughs> Oh, well, they said they're gonna. They said they're gonna try to do more. I'm. I'm I, I don't know. Try them over right now. I'm thinking in the long run, like if they have more teams on. There. Yeah, yeah. Like I want this. I feel like the only way this is gonna work, and the only way that like, I'm gonna be interested is if they really make it structured like that, where like it's something I can make sense of. It's like, oh, this it's Overwatch Day. Like this is you know just like football is on Saturday, yeah. Overwatch is on Thursday or something. Like, and you know, you just everyone's competing. And it's like, oh, they're doing really good this season. They're doing really bad. And like, well, uh, I, wait, I just thought technically they don't even need to go place to place. They can do it. 
<laughs> yeah, they, they. I think they. I think they said in the video and stuff that the that, that like. I think that their their end goal is to actually have these like events. Yeah, like where people can actually I mean, go definitely be more interesting. But yeah, yeah, but they don't have to. Yeah, yeah. and at least start out with they could potentially do just. You know, they play against each other online and then stream that. What I want to know is like, what is? Because I don't even like. I mean, like, we might sound stupid because there's probably people that know a lot more about, like, Overwatch as an eSport right now. But I wonder what one Overwatch match would be. Like, this team plays this team. What exactly is it? Like, how many games do you play? Yeah. What kind of games do you play? What kind of games do you play and everything? Because especially if you're having people come to it, then you you have to play a good bit yeah. to make that worth it. Like, you can't just, okay, best two out of three. Oh, they won. All right. Bye everyone. Go home. Yeah, like I, I just wonder how exactly that's going to be formatted. Um, and also they need to take this seriously and be professional about it because one of the things, the little bit of experience I have with esports, the thing that I absolutely hate about it is how they basically make it like a reality show, like a cheesy reality show where like there's beef between, there's like orchestrated beef between the players <laughs> or like, oh yeah, well Jim, I hate him. He's like freaking, the, you know, like. I want them to actually act like, you know, this is a real thing. Smash, they go out to each other. Jake Leaf Huff is trash. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> you got anything else on that? Not really. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes, though. Definitely yeah. very... I saw, you know, we kind of knew it was coming. We see the... See this article and this news in particular, like, huh, this is weird. This is a weird reality we live in. All I know is I can't ever pull for the Boston team. <laughs> out of principle. Like, did you ever think that we would get something like NFL, but for a video game, basically? No. <laughs> also, they all need to have awesome mascots and logos. Yes. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to do that. But, like, would they each get, like, dibs on a character or how that would go? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. I will pull for the Atlanta team as long as the logo is cool. Yeah. If we get Atlanta. If we get Atlanta team. But yeah, that's interesting. Like, I'm wondering what they're going to do. Uh, and this is why we're excited to announce that Nerds at Large is starting the Columbia Overwatch team. We're doing it. We're going to be good enough. We're going to take them all on. <laughs> we're going to lose. <laughs> we're not going to get anywhere close. <laughs> we got it, Jeff. We got this. Sign us up. Sign us up. I'm like the fourth highest level player we have. I'm only in level 30-something. <laughs> You have you're a good thirty. Okay. You've been playing with the you've been playing with us, so you've been playing high. The big boys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually do my job. <laughs> yes. That's that are you put you above a lot of people. Yes. Okay. So Dari, you ready for the last news of the week? I believe I am. John. And it is that that's awesome news of the week. Burr, 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 burr. It's gonna be short and simple. Don't know why I keep doing the air horn. Some of you might have seen this. But there is a video on Mario Kart VR, which it's called Mario Kart RK GP VR. Get hype, but not too hype. Yeah. It is in the works for Japanese arcades. Yeah. The video is sweet, but... <laughs> what, are the, what are the odds that we have any Japanese listeners or that we ever will? <laughs> uh, what are the odds that one up. random person was like just found us and they're like, oh, hey. I'll listen to this. I mean, one in... A billion. Hmm. Well, if you're out there, <laughs> then get hype. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. This could come like David Busters or something. Who knows? Like, if this does come to America, like, you guys, like, legitimately go watch the video. Like, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, just the whole idea of being able to do, like, Mario Kart. I mean, it's Mario Kart. Like, it's the track and everything else. And, like, you actually you hold the item in your hand. Yeah. And you throw the... So cool, so so cool. I would love to play it, and I hope I just hope it comes to America in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, me and Jeff were talking about like, would Nintendo put this on like Oculus or Vive or something? Like, I wonder if they'd be willing to do that. I think they were talking about their own VR thing at some points. I don't know. That's what, I just don't know if they could, if they look at Oculus and Vive as competitors or as like a platform. Like they like they've been putting stuff on mobile. You know? Yeah. I really don't know. No. I, like again, there's no way, shape, or form it's going on PSVR, but they, I think there's a chance for Oculus and Vive. Um, think of VR F Zero. <laughs> you would throw up. Probably. <laughs> you would straight up throw up. Yes. 
Straight up throw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about all there is to that. Go, yeah. go look at that video. It's real cool. Indeed. All right, Jeffrey, that is all for the news this week. So we will move on to the main topic of the show. And, Jeff. Darby. This, however long ago it was, gosh, we're halfway through July. What in the world? Like two weeks ago. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy came out on the PS4. It is three, the first three Crash games. Yes. Completely remastered, like, graphics... Like move set, like the like control wise, like it's not just your normal remaster. It was like somewhere in between a remaster and a remake because the levels are the same, but like it does, it looks completely overhaul. Like it was, it was done right. Completely different, yeah. It was com- <laughs> really done right, and everyone loves it. This game, Jeff, has sold extremely well. I don't have like a lot of the specific things, but I know like just in its first, it was. It came out like the last day of June, and it was already like at the top of the PlayStation Store. Yeah, I know so, it was like the top selling game in like the UK and stuff. Yeah, like UK Europe, charts yeah. had it everywhere, and even even just PlayStation Store in general, I think it like went to the top of June, which obviously kind of a, week, a weaker month, but still, it was out for one day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it like shoots out to that. It's a crazy. So, what this kind of says to me, which is something I, I think I already knew a lot, but a lot of people in games media are older than us. Like, we're young whippersnappers here. And a lot of people, when they think of their, like, nostalgia for old games, they think back to, like, SNES and stuff like that. Like, way yeah. back in, like, or NES and, like, you know, that kind of stuff or earlier. Um, and they don't really think about this type of thing. But I think, like, we're obviously at the point where games from that era, like Crash and those old mascot platformers, are now like old enough to where there is a generation of people who, with disposable income, who are nostalgic for these. Mm-hmm. You know. So I guess like where we're going with this, do you think that this type of like nostalgia like grab with this, do you think this could work with anyone else? Obviously, everyone's clamoring for Spyro right now. Yeah, that's the one people bring up now. Is because Spyro and Crash are so connected. Do you think Spyro could work in the modern age, like like Crash kind of is, even though it's it is a look backwards? But um, do you, or do you think that people would it would not hold up nearly as well? Hmm, I don't need to see Spyro because it's been a while. Yeah, me, to see how it too. does. But part of me, my gut reaction is like. Hey, if Crash works out that way, why not Spyro? Yeah, yeah. I part of me worries more about Spyro because as weird as this, like, well, I think back in the day, honestly, if if we're gonna be real for a second, I don't think the Crash games are that great. <gasps> like they're they're all right, but there's not much to them. Yeah, like Crash games are basically what you play on your phone now. Like it's just like endless runners, basically. I know there's more to it than that, but it's like. And it's better than, like, a phone in this runner. So, like, I, I get that. I just think there's not a whole lot to the game. So, I feel like, yeah, it holds up because there's just... There's not much for you to see flaws in, exactly, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah. I feel like Spyro, in a way, was trying to do more back then. You could fly. Yeah, and back then I think it succeeded because it was, like, PS2 and it's, like, you know... PS1. PS1, yeah, sorry. And, um, yeah, it was more revolutionary back then. I almost feel like now, if you bring Spyro up now, like, we've had games like Spyro, but much, much better since then. Mm -hmm. And I worry that people would, like, kind of, they look back with rose-tinted glasses. Like, I don't know if they actually want Spyro again. Yeah, I think a lot of it is, like, no, this worked for Crash, maybe it'll work for Spyro, maybe. Yeah. Again, because they're so connected. And... The other side of this is that everyone now is saying, well, with how good the Crash game, like the Insane Trilogy did, could we see a new Crash from these these, these same people who made this remaster? Mm-hmm. And a lot of and a lot some people say they want that. This is where I pretty firmly think, at least Crash as we know it, I don't know if a new game. Here's the thing. Here's my kind of stance on that. 
Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's got to be different than the original Crash trilogy. It's got to be different than these games, which people are liking. But they've done that. There's been so many other Crash games that people do not care they for hate, at all. Yeah. And they're not good games for the most part. There might be yeah. one or two that are decent. And that's why I don't feel like there's enough to Crash that... To warrant this. Like, like just it, remake Crash Team Racing and just get it over with. Yeah, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what a lot of people really want. That, hey, I'd be for that. And that's easier. Like, you're yeah. not trying to reinvent just, the wheel. Just pretty much that. do what you did with the same trilogy with Crash Team Racing. And I, I honestly think it's coming. I mean, yeah. yeah it's coming. Eventually I mean, it's with coming the way this yeah. is apparently sold. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 <laughs> and with how much just people want it. I mean, also, Crash Team Racing has potential to do more because it's a kart racer. It's not Mario Kart that could actually be good. Yeah. I, and it'll be on PlayStation. But Assu- per, you assume. As weird as this is, I don't think a new Crash game is really something that's worth making. But I think a, you actually could, instead of going back with the old Spyros, I feel like you could make a new Spyro and kind of like reinvent a lot of stuff. Almost like the way I look at this, it's a completely different type of game. But yeah. like Ratchet and Clank show that you can have a PS4 version of some of these older type of like games like this and just reinvent it in ways. What? Yeah. Wasn't Spyro also made by Insomniac? Isn't, isn't that the way it is? You vamp and I'll look. Okay, um, let me think. Yeah, I think we're like, well, with Spyro, we've got in Skylanders. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know, the whole new Crash game thing is a little weird. Because, like I said, there have been so many of them. I think it was Easy Allies said, up until, like, 2011, we got a Crash game about yearly. Yeah. Um, by the way, yes. Okay. Time, yeah, yeah. I thought that was it. Um, yeah, so I don't know if a new Crash game thing is what we want slash need, because, yeah, it'd be either they're just redoing what they did with the same play style as the Insane Trilogy, but... <laughs> yeah. Do we really need something exactly like that? Try to make it new but still the same. We're seeing, I mean, how people respond to that with ukulele. Yeah. No. But that doesn't only mean it wouldn't work for Crash. And yeah, they try different stuff with all the other Crash games, and people just did not like them. And I know, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to not bring Crash more. Like, obviously, this is bringing Crash into the new generation, but like. I think it's kind of fine to just look at these old games and, like, remember them and be, like, happy about that. Yeah. But not everything necessarily needs to continue being Mm -hmm. a thing here. And I'm not just crapping on Crash. Like, I think old, like, platformers and stuff, like, obviously, like, Sly Cooper came back in PS3 and I think they did an amazing job of it. And Ratchet and Clank just came back and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it can be done well with those. Mario's are still being made. Yes, yeah. But, uh, and also, like, honestly, mascot platformers are one of the biggest areas where my nostalgia lies. Yeah. A, a lot of it was more of PS2 mascot plat- like mascot. I, mean, I think we made it clear where my nostalgia lies with platformers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Jeff is Banjo. Mario 64. Yeah. All those Nintendo, kind of stuff. Nintendo Rare, all that. Ooh, I'll be able to play Conqueror's Bad for a day. Where we play? That'd be fun. Oh yeah, speaking of that, I I didn't realize how many multiplayer games are on that thing. <laughs> on, oh yeah, okay. yeah, the rare. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect Dark all stuff. I want to play some of those. Yeah, if you, we should definitely do that one day. Yeah. I'd, okay, back on topic. <laughs> yes. Um, but um, I guess. All right. I guess there were, were there any other ones we think other than Spyro or Crash we think could get this kind of tra- treatment, or. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I guess we're mainly focusing on the mascot platformers, but I guess want to there are to... older ones, like even like medieval. Even there's like some like really old school games that people, you know. I mean, there's always the chance that um, uh, Microsoft sees how, what Crash did. Look at u- the ukulele thing, being like, okay, people want this kind of game, but we're disappointing ukulele for. And for different reasons other than the type of game it is for the most part like do you do this kind of thing with Banjo-Kazooie yeah, yeah. the original Banjo-Kazooie and Tui yeah I mean do you think we could theoretically actually see kind of a, a another rise of mascot games like I I can see it potentially just because there's obviously the want for them 
Because yeah. we saw how good Ukulele's Kickstarter did. I mean, again, how it was received and how, you know, is different than how, what people want. Mm. Like, how many people want it. You see how many people are interested in Mario. I know it's Mario, but still, if we, you know, people like those kind of games still. Yeah. We see how people wanting this Crash game, partly because, yes, nostalgia and the fact it's what people remember and it actually just seems to be legitimately good. Yeah, yeah. And they, uh, people just want legitimately good. And I kind of, powers. I think like a lot of, like, it all kind of comes back around. I think like we went through a lot of like, you know, especially like in the in the 360 PS3 generation, it was like, no, we don't need these kitty mascot games. We have we got a little shooters. big planet. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, yeah, we have that. But like the popular thing, we have shooters. We have like gritty, realistic thing. That was kind of the style that was popular. But we're even starting. Obviously, that's still here. Mm. But we're starting to see that kind of like people get a little fatigued with that. And we've seen like like other like indie games, right? Like Journey and yeah. and stuff like that, and Abzu and these. Games that, like, I think once upon a time, and like in the middle of the Halo, like, Call of Duty, like, peak there. Mass Effect. I don't think Journey more. ever would have worked. Like, yeah. I don't think it would have hit an audience like it did now. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing Ori and, like, all these other types of things. So I think there's a room for that, more of that, like, not saying that those are like one for one exactly like the mascot yeah. platformers, but it's a little more away from the like gritty realistic shooter mm-hmm. thing and more. You can ar- the, argue that Ori is a mascot platformer. I mean, it, not yeah. the way we think about it's it. It's kind of like a Metroid type gameplay thing, but yeah. it is mascot. But yeah, you know, cute yeah, little it's animal. Like, yeah, it's character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think the problem with hurting these type of games is, for the most part, they're low budget. Yeah. Slash mid budget, like the only mascot platformer that has a big budget is Mario, <laughs> and and yeah. other Nintendo stuff. Yeah, he's like the big holdout basically yeah. from that generation, and it still works because it's Mario. I mean, yeah, he's well, the, Mario is the platformer. Yeah, I mean, well, like, and yeah. the fact that Nintendo gives obviously the studio the time and creative freedom to do something different with them. The right. other ones that we've seen recently for better or worse, are sticking to nostalgia and copying and pasting what worked back then. Yeah. Well, my Odyssey is obviously doing new stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying a bad thing for, like, Crash and stuff, but... No, I mean, and, and that was that was what people wanted out yeah. of that, that thing. They wanted to relive their old kids. And for the sounds of, like... like it they look, faced it, a couple things. It, it like, looks a lot better, and they, like, fixed up some things, but it, it sounds like they kept the games pretty true up to the point where most people are like, yeah, you can pretty much skip Crash 1 if you want. <laughs> I mean, like, that's what a lot of people said. Like, it's 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 good, but they were trying to figure things out. Then they're yeah. like, if you like, really, if you're not like digging Crash One, they're like, just skip the Crash Two because they get. Yeah. Really, a lot know. of people saying yes, still screw Crash One. It's, yeah. it's hard for the sake of being hard. It's hard just because of bad level design more yeah. than like yeah. Crash Souls, and good. maybe that's where like some of my bad will from Crash comes because I played that one probably more. Than I can't even remember which one I played. I guess whatever ones you had. <laughs> I think I played a lot of them at some point or another. I don't know if I ever had all of them, but like other people did. I want to say you had the third one. I did have like I know I had a few, but yeah, yeah. And then I had like Wrath of Cortex or something. That might be the one I remember. I can't remember. I had some. I had some PS2 one. That, probably one of the ones that everyone hates. I don't remember. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting though. Yeah, it is very interesting. I'm like interested to see. If this does, like, create another swarm of, like, hey, it worked for them, let's try it. Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of... Yeah, again, like I said, does Microsoft look at this since they have old Rare properties and do similar things? And, and it could, like, influence Sony or Microsoft or something to fund more of these, like, mid-tier, yeah. like, 2A games. I mean... They have kind of fallen out. Like, we have, like, small indie stuff, and we have giant AAA stuff. Sony's doing a little more on that, because technically, to them, Ratchet was like that. It was beautiful, but it was priced like a... It was $40, mid, yeah. yeah. They're doing that with Knack 2, mm. and it looks like it's actually a good game this time. So, yeah. that's yeah. nice. So, oh, yeah, I'm interested to see what they do, how Knack 2 does, and how it's received. Um... Yeah, and Nintendo has done some of that too, where they do little mid tier games with some of their things. Captain Toad, first thing they come to yeah. my head. And I think there's definitely a place for those games. I don't think we get enough I, things like that. Yeah, I think we're seeing more and more people do one of those games, like 
Hellblade is that's the, what they want to show with that game that these kind of games can prosper yeah. in this day and, and age. especially like just from a consumer perspective like in a time like when I'm going through times where I'm trying to save more money or try not to buy as many games I'm a lot more likely to pull the trigger on something like it's like a 20 to 30 dollar game that doesn't take as much time yeah yeah and, but it's also kind of unique yeah I mean, like, and obviously a lot of that's filled with indies and stuff, but it could yeah. also be filled with more stuff like this, you know. Mm-hmm. Like Ratchet and Clank, I bought that day one, even though yeah. you were, I knew you were getting it because, hey, this is $40, it's the kind of game I love, Which, why not? I mean, that game was so good, I would have oh, gladly yeah. paid $60 <laughs> for it. Like, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of times I was even questioning, when they said it was 40 I was like, really? I was yeah. like, this this game looks way too, like... Way too much like a real Ratchet and Clank game to be forty like that that like in ways like I almost felt like that might have even hurt it because it might have been people might have looked at it and be like oh was this just some like remaster or remake or something or is it uh, I think then it helped it because people did hear how good it was and like, yeah okay it's forty dollars I mean I, I think in the long run it probably helped it but I think yeah. just some of the talk around it was just yeah. like it was confusing but but the game did did the talking in the end. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> phenomenal game. Yeah. That game's so good. <laughs> all right, Jeffrey. I believe that's all we got this week. Yep. Unless you, no. Um, all I have to say about the whole crash thing. Yeah, I do hope this continues to do well, and we do see more of these mascot platformers, like actually being take you know made with care and double A like mid price games. Yeah, like Sly Cooper, right? Yeah. Sony, please. That cliffhanger. You left it on a cliffhanger, and then. You've abandoned it. Sony, please. You can't do this to my heart, okay? Give it to Sanzari. Sanzari, you yes. can't. Do, I don't know whose fault it is. I don't know if it's Sanzari's fault or Sony's fault. Whoever it is, fix it. Probably Sony, because... Probably. Yeah. I doubt Sanzari would say, no, we don't want this very popular IP. No. And, again. like, didn't it... Like, from what I heard, it didn't sell that badly, did it? Like, I thought no. I heard it, like, it hit over a million. Uh, it was like... I think so. And plus, wasn't that also priced to, like, a $40 game? Yeah, it was. Yeah. And that was an awesome deal to get the Vita code. With you the just Vita, gave that yeah, to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I just played it on the Vita. Which he ran really well, if I remember right. Yeah. It was really good. <laughs> oh, I miss Sly so much. Yeah. It's still my freaking phone background, the Sly. <laughs> Oh, give us Sly Cooper again. I, I nope. feel like Greg Miller shouting for Patapon, but like, I'm just shouting for Sly Cooper. But you're a nobody, so. Yeah, I am a nobody. <laughs> no, so. we're not going to listen to you. Nope. Just get ready for five more Patapon games instead. Yeah. Made by Sucker Punch. Maybe that's their new game. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well, thank you guys so oh, much. We, we got one more thing, Darby. I know it's new. Our goals for the week. Oh, I forgot. All right, you go. I'll try to... Think of one on the fly. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to... This is probably going to be a theme for both me and Darby, but carrying over failed ones from the previous week. I'm going to watch Castlevania. I'm going to do that two hours. I need to do that. Um, I guess I don't need to, but I want to. Um, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to f- play and try to complete Night in the Woods. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, my next game, I think, was going to be Ukulele, but I'm like, eh, I'll play. I don't f- feel like playing something shorter, especially like coming off Zelda. Um, I might, I'll, I'll add this also just to keep up with the amount we've been doing. I'm going to try to play some Watch Dogs. I want to try to finish How that far game. did you get in that? I want to say I got like 12, 15 hours in. Okay. I got a decent ways in. Hmm. Uh, I might, I'm, I might at this point try to do less side stuff and go through the story, but yeah. Hmm. Be a little more picky with my side stuff. Yeah. Um. You love that game. I'll go pretty boring. I want to. I'll. I'll carry over the Witcher thing. That's gonna be something that's gonna. It's gonna happen a lot. Are we just carry over from the previous week? And I'm just. I was just. I, I just could. I couldn't pull myself away from twelve. I couldn't pull my away from. It's all good. Five days till I just couldn't. Do it. I couldn't do it last week for Zelda. Yeah. So I'll say that, and because like I'm legitimately, I'm like one mission away from finishing, so that'll take no time at all. I also want to watch the Castlevania series. I want to yeah. be able to talk about that, and it's. Like two hours, two and a half hours, or something like that. It's nothing. Could that be a potential spoiler cast? It could. <laughs> it very well could, Jeff. We're all. From people who have not much experience Castlevania games or memories? Yeah, we'll see how we feel about that. Yeah. <laughs> no promises. Yeah. But, but what we will have spoiler casts on is <gasps> Game of Thrones. Which 
It's the first time. episode will have premiered by the time you hear this. Yeah. <laughs> Most likely, unless I... We're get... two days away. <laughs> yes, so close, Jeff. A few of them are bones. Yeah. All right, so we will have episodes, spoiler cast for every single episode of Game of Thrones. It will should be going up Monday morning every week. Should. I'm going to try my absolute best to make that happen. And you can find all those, if you're a podcast listener, you can find those on Nerds at Large Spoiler Cast. Just search that wherever you get your podcast and you'll be able to find it. Mm-hmm. Or you can find all of our content on YouTube at just Nerds at Large. Yep. And uh, yeah, check out our other spoiler cast. We have one for Spider Man Homecoming. Yep. I thought it was fun. We have Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. We plan on doing more in the future. Rick and Morty, probably just the whole season. Bojack Horseman date announced. Probably yep. we'll just do one for the season. Yep. We're going to be busy people. Yep. <laughs> Especially with this Game of Thrones thing. It's going to be recording this podcast and that. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening. Yep. Thank you for listening.